man. Yo, this man right here, man, is, is doing everything, man. Like ESPN contributor, former host of the Morning Jones, mm. morning show on Sirius XM. Yep. Host of bon- Bomani and Jones on SB Nation. I like that. He's a panelist of ESPN's Around the Horn. Best show. He's got over 84,000 followers on Twitter. Mm. He was just mentioned in... If, Huff- but if you put out an album, Bomani, only about 5,000 people going to buy that shit. Yo, he, that's he, so real, though, because I got a, this video show that suffers from the same problem. Like, it's 80,000 of y'all in this same 4,500. He was just mentioned <laughs> in the Huffington watched, Post. Watched. In the Huffington Post. Yes. As one of the top... Young people to follow from a historically black college and university. Mm. Internet. Wait a minute, they had to do all that? They, they did that. <laughs> they did that. <laughs> they had to do all they that? They the top people to watch for 2013. I mean, he's one of the top people to watch. For 2013. Then they went and, did, and, then they went and had to just qualify. Yeah, right? yeah they did college. qualify. But anyway, Internet. <laughs> it's, with, it's with honor and, yes. and, and joy that I, that I welcome to the Combat Jack Show, Bamani Jones. Dude, yeah, I appreciate yeah, it, man. Yeah, what's going on, yes, sir? Dude, what's going on? Good to meet you officially. Because you used to listen and call in the show and everything. was greatly appreciated. I loved your show, man. Like, like for real, man. Like, like, I thought when I first got on satellite that it was going to open up this big, vast world of, like, all of this uh, premiere entertainment that I couldn't find anywhere else and it, what ended up happening was I would just listen to Howard Stern and I would listen to you man because mm-hmm. you had that real talk man like you know I'm not that big of a sports fan right I don't I mean I enjoy my casual sports yeah. but when it comes down to stats and who did this in 1970 casual stop. sports like like domestic violence no nah, no nah, <laughs> stop but but I would listen to your shit man and, and you talk about sports and some real shit also man some yeah. daily shit man I appreciate that well no the biggest compliment was the, the tricky thing about being on serious and being in the morning was the whole reason everybody got serious was to listen to Howard Stern yes, like yeah. we were up against the franchise right, every right. day so anytime somebody would say that they turned off Howard Stern to check us out I was just like, man, appreciate it. Well, because you were like the black side of Howard Stern in a sense. Yeah. Man. How was Corey and Sasha, man? Dude, they're good. Sasha's teaching school now. That was his whole thing. Because, mm. you know, that's him. That's the sort of guy he is. He's teaching school. Corey's kind of blowing up, man. Getting props from Al Bernstein about his boxing commentary. Really? Yeah, he's on the boxing channel now, doing nice. a lot of that stuff and making trips. You know, Corey's 24 years old. Nice. So okay. this is, I'm, I'm convinced that in. 15, 20 years, Corey's going to be where Jim Lampley is mm. now. Like, he's going to be the guy. He's going to push go Larry through. Merchant out? He's going to be... Well, we know who's going to push Larry Merchant out. Your friend of mine, the Reaper. He, he's not <laughs> walking away. Larry Merchant is not walking away from that job talking about, right. I'm going to retire. Right, we, right. we are going to see it in for Larry Merchant. <laughs> we will all be witnesses for when Larry Merchant goes off to yeah. Or, or Max Kellerman. But, but the, the good thing is maybe Larry Merchant will Howard Cosell his shit. Mm. Do I give this to Larry Merchant though? He's eighty something years old and he's ready to fight behind all of that he's stuff. He's ready to fight. He is still ready to fight. The problem is he's you can't ordering. fight an eight, but you can't fight an eighty year old man. Mm-hmm. Like he's ready to fight and then calling you a punk because you didn't hit the eighty year old man. In twenty twelve, you can. In twenty twelve, you can fight an eighty year old man. B. I mean, I'd be okay. Open, <laughs> open hand slap. Open, open hand slap. <laughs> open hand slap. No, well, Try what, to slap the dentures well, out the mouth. But once we start talking about all men over the age of fifteen, right. you're fully aware that what you're saying might get you hit in the mouth. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. knows. He, he knows. knows. Oh man. no, he knows all day. Lots of problem with old people, man. Old people get real cantankerous with you on the expectation you that you're gonna show them some respect. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that old privilege. Need more people to hit old that's people. Old man yeah. privilege. <laughs> that's what we need. So but Monty, man, you are working on so much shit, man. You like you're everywhere, man. And and you talked about Corey, man, but you're only what thirty two. Yeah, 32. Yeah. You're only 32, man. I see you going, be, like, you're about to blow, B. Mm. We'll see. We'll see. One thing about it. You're about to blow, bro? I guess I have to, well, mm. pause. Pause. Blow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I've been doing this since I was like 19 in different ways, right. and I've had about 15 different, yo, it's about to blow up moments. And I had one that I thought was really good, and then they fired me. Mm-hmm. You know, like, this game is so tricky. I'm at the what, point. What, what, situ- what situation was this? That was when I was working at ESPN about five years ago. Okay. And I was, I was writing for ESPN.com, and then halfway through the one-year contract, I got an email, and I remember reading it, and I got to the end of it, and I was like, yo, man. This dude's trying to run me off the job. Mm. And then by the time it got to be over, it, was, it wasn't the best situation for anybody. Right. But that's the thing about this. You know, it's, it's no different than music stuff or anything else. You'll be there, and all it takes is one, the right, the right, wrong, however you want to put it, person not like you. What mm-hmm. was it? What was the incident? Was w- were, you, incident? were you blogging out of ESPN Zone? No, I was I was still in I was still in North Carolina. Okay, and I was, I was going to say when they had to close ESPN zone, they were probably like, okay, uh, uh Bomani, yep, yeah, yeah. I will tell you this though. What, 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 was was it behind an incident or what? No, just okay. not everybody's going to like you. Right. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, and the problem is everybody in the world can like you. If the one person that doesn't like you is your boss, what do you do? It's all fucked mm-hmm. up. What do you do? And then you go find something else. And that's mm-hmm. what I was lucky about is that didn't work out. And then we went straight into radio, right. which is talk about falling up, you mm-hmm. know, cuz then it was like, boom, okay, this is something I know how to do. So I did I had never done radio before 08. 
And then we started doing that radio show in, I started doing a Saturday show. Out of Rally. In, yeah, in January. And then in August of 08, we started doing that show. October of 09, the radio station got sold. Mm. And I didn't fit the brand image of the new right. operation, shall so we say. So grand closing. Yeah, grand closing. And then that's when Sirius came up. And the grand closing before was funny because I had found out that we had sent ratings up double what wow. they were under the previous host. Mm. I was set to come in and ask for a raise. Right. The day before I'm coming to ask for a raise. The day before. Th- yeah, the day before we find out the station got sold. That day I was going to ask for the raise. Somebody called me up and said, yo, I'm sorry to hear that uh, Taylor got your time slot. I'm like, what do you mean? Oh, you didn't hear? There's a press release. And this dude, basically, they put out a press release and said, my man, had got my radio show. And I called my boss. I was like, yo, so, you know, is this what happened? Oh, I can neither confirm nor deny. Mm. I was like, hey, man, I work for you. Like, <laughs> this is a different story. You not, don't not, not anymore. Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> so we did that and then wound up on Sirius. Right. So it was just, hey, man, this will roll and then it might not work. But now I was like, I'll be fine. I'll be have, right. you, have you spoken to the, to the people at the original station since? Or have they, Actually, have, it's funny you mentioned that. Yeah. When I started doing Around the Horn, they asked me to pick a studio, and mm. I picked the one that was in the same office building as those people. Now, was that out of spite, or was it out of spite? Out of spite. spite. It was I like that. It was I like inconvenient. That. It was yes. terribly inconvenient. Yes, yes. It's 30 minutes away. I skipped the five minute away from the house option. You'd be like, nah, let's go with the 30. Now, to right. be fair, that was before it all jumped off. I right. thought I'd just be going in there once every month or so, da, da, da. Now, I'm there four times a week. They don't even stop and ask for ID when I come through. Just <laughs> click, click. So, you, so you've door. seen these people see me all the time and, and what's the vibe like man Bomani is too I, young what's the vibe like? to know how to be a, a, a proper black respectful no, no. He's, white he's glove being, black man he's being well, proper well, right well, now one guy thinks well, you know when people think they're lying to you right. and think that you don't know mm. that they're lying to you so you give you all the fact i'm like yeah what's going on most of the people i work with that I was very cool with right but what i say about that one all it takes is that one and that one he sees me every now and then and he gets a little nervous and shakes it off hey man I just keep on walking he we, fucked up yeah he fucked you they, fucked up B they did and and but the thing you know the worst thing about it is what you realize especially with media they can fuck up but they don't care because right. they're like we're going to make money regardless so we're right. in Raleigh North Carolina they own the only sports operation in town they're mm-hmm. like hey we're going to be alright you know we, we go find somebody else to do this and in fact they didn't even replace me really they wow. went with nothing Wow. they mm-hmm. chose literally nothing and look they're making money hand over fist good for them so, so you haven't hurt them but it still feels good to be popping right now it was, right yeah, it's, it just you know put it like this when something like that happens, the assumption is, you know, you get like the the, the angry, bitter white folks who are on the sea. We knew that. Well, we knew this wouldn't last. Nobody right. wanted to hear this. Now, for them, it's satisfying. Right. right? Like, OK, mm-hmm. you're right. Radio didn't work. But you can see me on TV four times a week. For them, it's satisfying. For those other cats, I just look at it. And on one level, it is. But on another, I'm like, look, whether they happy or whether they not, I'm good. I, right. I, I do good. not have time good. to worry about what y'all do. Good. I am fine. Good. Mm-hmm. Now, now, Bomani, man, one of the things that, that strikes me about you, man, and there's certain individuals that have this quality that I'm almost so jealous of, man, is the fact that you seem so quick. You seem so quick with the responses. You seem so quick with the thoughts. Dallas Penn is like that. Um, Charlemagne is like that. Star, star from Star and Buck Wild used to be like that, man. Where do you get that from, man? Dude, my parents are college professors. Mm. Like, if you want to get in, you better get in fast. There's mm. not a whole lot of time to be like stopping and figuring this out and da da da. Like, if you're gonna get in, you gotta go to one thing on quick. Though I figured out is that if you got the confidence, because sometimes quick is gonna get you in trouble, right? right? Mm-hmm. Well, you can. But get, that's all right. Yeah, that's you the thing. Can get in, that's get the thing. Right. You can get through those. Like, if you stop and try to figure out, well, man, I don't know if this one's gonna work or whatever it is. Then after a while, people will cut you some slack. If you're quick enough, it's just go for batting average. Right. <laughs> you know, like I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, like, you don't want to be like the guy, like my brother always said, that he imagined Sinbad was the most annoying person in the world to hang out with because he seemed like he just make a bunch of bad jokes mm. all the time. Right. Once you realize you're not Sinbad. And he dressed bad. Dress, Sinbad yeah. just dressed bad. Yeah. yeah. You know, once you realize you're not Sinbad. And he extra light skin. He's extra light skin, but at least he's not doing that die thing anymore because he was in that horrible, like, Al B. Shurish era with the hair and everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. except he took it a step farther. Right. You, you know Sinbad won crazy off that, though. Like, we'll say, yo, Sinbad, oh, he look crazy. You know, he won stupidly off that with that dot. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Well, I think about Sinbad. Sinbad's like MC Hammer. Like, dude, I made more money off this little bit of talent than yep. you could possibly right. understand. Yep. Yep. Like, what's yep. your, how much money you making off your talent? <laughs> Not that much. <laughs> <laughs> you know?